are into day three of the RSSDI, which is our national conference, which is for the research study for the study of diabetes in India. And it gives me a great pleasure to talk about certain new guidelines for obesity and type 2 diabetes. So the RSSDI this year has recognized and in line with the ADA and the endocrine study guidelines has now come forth with some role and some role for weight management in our obese or overweight patients with type 2 diabetes. Previously, we used to just write as a cumbersome statement that lifestyle management is important in our patient with type 2 diabetes. What well, the RSSDI now has come up with some very fixed rules and policies, may you say, I know it sounds like a very strict word, but you need to help our patients improve their diabetes control, not simply with medications alone. Therefore, this is a great news for our patients that we now have new and improved diet as well as exercise and nutrition guidelines. What I would suggest you, to you is that uh, the new guideline which was just released yesterday, which is going to be also the 2020 guideline, suggests that we emphasize about 5 to 7 percent weight loss for most of our patients with type 2 diabetes. 5 to 7 percent weight loss in most of the studies has been shown to improve glycemic control, help to improve comorbidities such as PCOS, fatty liver, obstructive sleep apnea, dyslipidemia and hypertension. If you can go further and beyond and work with your patients in order to lose about 7 to 10 percent weight loss or even greater up to 15 percent weight loss, this will in fact may be associated with even reversal or remission of type 2 diabetes to some extent. This would be a good segue to talk about the direct trial, the results of which came out more than two years ago. What we have now at this time point is the two-year data wherein it shows that if you can help your patient lose up to about 15 kilograms, so this is not a percentage, it's a 15 kilogram weight loss, you can actually achieve great amounts of diabetes remission. And if they can maintain this weight loss, you can actually help them to stay in remission. By remission, I mean that their HbA1c is less than 6.5% and they're off all diabetes medications. So how can you go about achieving these really stringent goals in your patients with type 2 diabetes? So A, I would say that diet played a huge role. In the direct trial, what they did is they used a very low calorie diet for most of these patients and they were placed on an initial uh, low calorie diet of 800 kilocalories and they were slowly brought on to an isocaloric diet. Now this may sound very strict for our Indian population. So what I may suggest for your patient population is a trial of a low carbohydrate, low calorie diet for, sub, for about a few weeks and then maybe at least teaching them carbohydrate counting and then trying to keep them at least on a caloric deficit of about 20 to 30 percent of what they were achieving before or what they were consuming before to achieve these weight loss percentage goals. Along with this, you will certainly see a reduction in their medications. Maybe if they were on insulin, they could be removed from insulin and placed on oral medications. At the same time, weight loss is certainly going to help their other comorbidities, not just metabolic, but also musculoskeletal, such as osteoarthritis, difficulty walking, joint pains, and several other arthralgias and sleep apnea. So having said this, the American Diabetes Association as well as the RSSDI now gives you certain dietary guidelines which emphasizes the use of certain diet products such as complex carbohydrates. The key focus this year is on using whole intact grains and a lot of vegetables. So I'm not promoting to you today a low carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet but much more of a balanced diet which uses the least amount of processed foods. So trying to focus on a very good nutrition intervention using complex carbohydrates and isocaloric but slightly low carbohydrate diets I believe will go a long way in treating your patients with type 2 diabetes. Now at the same time I think it's very important to recognize that most of our patients with type 2 diabetes are on multiple medications. So if you put them on uh, nutrition interventions, it's important to maybe reduce the use of sulfonylureas or short-acting insulin analogs, which will allow you and your patient to successfully complete the dietary intervention in order to achieve your weight loss targets of 5 to 7% or even more stringent targets of 10 to 15%. 
So this is a part of what I wanted to speak to you about. The second part of the story is what are you trying to achieve in your patients? So really looking at the guidelines now, they have broken down the guidelines based on not just HbA1c centric, but we really try to you know, look at the patient and break them down into do they have any atherosclerotic CVD or any underlying cardiovascular disease, do they need weight loss or do they have any CKD. Now why is this important because several of our um, medications that we use help us to achieve both of these targets which is weight loss and secondly preventing ASCVD at the same time. Namely SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP A1 analogs such as your uh, glutide or dulaglutide now have actually an indication on their package insert saying that if your patient is not at goal and especially if he has underlying ASCVD you are compelled to use these as your first line agents. Now certainly in a country like ours cost becomes a limiting factor. So what I would say is we should try very hard to see how we can talk to our patients and work with them even for an initial three to six month use of these agents as even a short term use of these agents may help to reverse severe underlying metabolic complications and therefore in the long run translate into economic and cost economic ratios for most of our patients. So if you have an overweight obese patient who already has underlying ASCVD which is atherosclerotic CVD or has very high risk factors. If he has underlying chronic kidney disease, microalbuminuria or a lower GFR, you are kind of compelled and you should be thinking about using SGLT2 inhibitors and agents such as GLP-1 agents at the outset, also using SGLT2 agents very early on in the disease process. Now say this patient comes back to you in time uh, and he's doing really well, at that point in time along with weight loss. You may not need to use agents that cause side effects such as hypoglycemia, namely the sulfonylureas. Of course, in our less affording patients, very often we tend to lean in favor of the DPP-4 inhibitors or the alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. And I would say that you are not incorrect, but bear in mind that weight loss, use of medications and nutritional interventions that will help your patients to lose about 7 to 10 percent of body weight has now become a part of not just the international guidelines but our very own RSSDI guidelines as well. I thank you very much for being with me today and I look forward to the last day tomorrow of RSSDI. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.